<clears throat> Hello there guys, welcome to Pivot Basics. Now, I'm going to be showing you how to work Pivot from your very starting point all the way up till when you actually become a Pivot Master. Now I am by no means a Pivot Master. I am probably intermediate level, which is mid-range, which is what most animators shoot to be. Um, but you can get better than that, which is what I'm aiming for. So, I'm still improving. But, at the same time, I'd like to show you guys how you can be improving your stuff up to that intermediate level where most people want to get to. Because intermediate is where you've got your basics down, you know how to do it, you look good animating, but you're not very flashy, you don't add all sorts of extravagant camera angles. That's probably the wrong use of that word, but I really do not care. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, let's get into our first thing. Now, first thing you'll see is, this will usually be white. I'll show you how to change that in a later tutorial. But, I changed mine darker because I'm used to it being darker, because I am kind of used to Pivot 2, and back then you could change all sorts of stuff. So I turned mine dark because, well, brighter stuff strains my eyes more. I'm not really fond of bright stuff. So, it's more comfortable without keeping it solid black. Alright, so let's start off with our file menu. Now, when you click this up, you have a ton of options. Now, your first option is new, which creates a new animation using this one's template and sizes. I'm really sorry for that noise you just heard. It was a bumping of the microphone. So, new. Open animation will open a previously made animation, like my instant transmission. Let's go and, sorry about that, I'm scratching so it's bumping. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to demonstrate the new, and when you actually open up a new one, you'll come with this guy here. You never want to use this guy. Like, I'm sorry, but if you use him, that's like your number one mistake. He is not very posable, I guess. He's not very well made. So don't use him, just delete him using our delete. But let's stick to the files for right now. Now, there is new, open animation, which we just showed. Save animation will save the current animation over what you've been working on. Say you've been working on an animation, and if you press save and it's the first time you've done it, it'll allow you to save it given the name you want it to be. But anytime after that, it just saves over your previous work save as is what you're going to want to do but you at least have to have one frame in same for save and that can be summed up with control s that's your shortcut key for the saving alright and then goes to export which is something you'll need to get uh, used to which is how to show off your animation so say I've got an animation here and I want to export it you're given plenty of options in whichever place you want it to be Let's stick to our this, but you can save it as a GIF, which is what you're going to want to actually export it as if you've got something like Flash or another program of similar uh, design. You also have AVI, which not very good. It's very low quality. And then you've got separate images, which you have, which if you've downloaded a free program like GIMP, um, then separate images is what you want. But most people will stick to GIF because, or GIF, either one, because that allows you to export it into Flash, or import it into Flash, sorry, and then from Flash you can edit it to an AVI to upload. But yes, that is how that works. Now, exporting will not save, and save will not export, so you have to do those two things separately. Then comes loading in backgrounds, which allows you to pick a bitmap, P JPEG, GIF, or PNG photo to use as your background. Now, if you use bitmap, which is what I think this one is, they are really, really low quality. No, PNG is low quality. JPEG is what you're going to want to use. So, I will delete that because this does the full quality of the gradient. And then we can delete that frame. So, 
now it looks very good and smooth and nice okay then we're gonna go to load sprites which we're not gonna get into sprites with you guys just yet but basically it loads in a picture as long as that picture is on a solid colored background like this was on solid white it'll cut out all that solid color and allow you to just use this but all you can do with it is turn it that is our base figure that we'll be learning about later okay we'll delete him and then move on to load figures figures are your actual figures that you've posed in animes they're the things that make your pivot animation your pivot animation you can't do anything in pivot without these figures so you can either download figures or as I'm going to show you how to do make a figure and you really want to make your own figures it sets you apart from everybody else and it allows you to throw your own twist on stuff in a way you couldn't if you were just using previously made figures or figures made by other people okay so I'm just gonna load in my generic base and you see when you load these if you're using pivot 4 which you should be using it gives you a quick little preview of your figure and you can open them and stuff like that but for right now we don't need him and then there's the create figure option which is where you create all your good figures it'll start off with just a simple stick that should usually look about like that but we'll get into figure creation in the second part of this okay and then comes edit which is where you're going to want to learn how to do your deletes and your redos which are delete is control Z or control Z and your redo is control Y Right, and then options which are going to be very important you can set your dimensions now most people will animate at about 640 to 360 and I have auto size on my language is English and then onion skins you can set how many uh, frames before that you'll be able to see and those will be transparent um, I'll show you what I mean in a second and then you can do show ahead which is good for when you're going back through an animation okay but for now I'll show you what an onion skin is now when you create a new frame and you move your figure it shows sort of a uh, shadow or a uh, remnant of your old frame or thing in the actual color so say I like this guy and I want him red you can do that and when I move he'll be red which is a new addition to pivot 4 and which is one of the main reasons you should get pivot for well not main reason but it is quite important that you can see all your different characters and stuff without it just being solid gray okay so now that we have that down we can go into help which will teach you about all the stuff that I'm teaching you right now so there is your file edit and help now the rest of this is just pretty self uh, well it's probably a little harder to get the hang of because you don't haven't had experience with pivot before so okay first off play stop loop and frame rate you're going to lock your frame rate at about 18 18 is where you should be animating at it is not too slow and not too fast do not do what all noob animators do and make your animations at 31 never ever go that high and never go down to 7 never your lowest should be 16 and your highest at 20 stay at about 18 now I deviate from 18 and I go to 17 but for the most part go on 18 okay from there you can use load your old backgrounds which are white or whichever other backgrounds you loaded and figures lets you allow or allows you to load figures that you've already used and if you hold control allows you to click twice and then we'll get into this now the first thing you've seen me use a lot is the delete which is just this big X would allow you which will allow you to delete it and if it's the first frame that this figure is used in it allows you to delete the figure from this animation entirely which means he will not appear in your add figure box second is edit which sends you into the animator 
or in the figure creator, but it allows you to just edit the current figure so you can save them, delete your old, and then bring the new one in. From that, we have center, which sends you to the center of the animation. So if I move this guy way out here, if I press that, it puts his origin point right in the center. This is the flip. It flips your character directly to the other side. Um, front, it brings your character to the very front. So if I have another character here, we'll make this guy blue, and we'll make another guy, and we'll make him red, just so we can sort of show off this real quick. Now we got this black figure here, and if we send him, press this, it sends him to the direct front. If we send that, click that, which is to the other side, it sends him to the direct back. But if we're holding control, I'm hoping it's this one. You can click and, oh, it's this one. You can send him through just once. Alright, and from there we have the color option, which allows you to pick from all of these very nice colors. I use every one of these at least somewhere. Or you can create a custom color using this magic little rainbow here. The top ones create your more vibrant, while down here it grays them down a bit. Which are very nice for stylizing your animations. From that you've got the duplicate figure, which you've seen me use already. Down here is the join, which we won't get into until you get into some more advanced stuff. But essentially what you do is it allows you to join it to a figure. So now this guy has this man locked by the bum. <laughs> okay. Um, and then you have your size, which allows you to... Let's delete him. This allows you to control how big your character is or how small. And then you have transparency, which allows your character to look more... Um, ghost like and then you have an add frame and after you've clicked add frame once you can just use spacebar from then on and that will allow you to move your character and then pressing play will allow you to play it stop will stop and then loop will if you have it looped on your character will constantly loop if off your character won't loop but it also removes the last frame so be very careful when you're using that use loop to preview your animations Alright, thank you for your time. This has been the first episode of the Pivot Tutorials. If you like this video, then drop a like. If you liked uh, this and or can tell me something you'd want to uh, have me improve on or just something that you'd like to know, leave a comment. And if you want to see more, subscribe. Alright, well, thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day and good luck animating.